Order, order. Hello and welcome to Reporters Without Orders, a podcast where we talk about what made news, what didn't, and some things that absolutely shouldn't have. I'm your host, Akansha Kumar. The malafide intentions of the users of social media platform Facebook have been questioned for a while now. The ripple effect was felt here in India in August 2020 after the Wall Street Journal published a story about an Indian politician getting a leeway despite posting stuff about Rohingya Muslims which was mostly hate speech. This was followed by a series of reports in the Indian Express, the Time magazine, in November last year after the Facebook papers came to light. The Facebook papers were essentially a series of revelations by a former employee and whistleblower, Francis Haugen. Joining me in the studio are journalists from the Reporters Collective. I have with me on my right, Kumar Sambhav, an investigative award-winning journalist. And also joining us is Sri Girish Jalihal, who is also a part of the Reporters Collective, who have recently filed a four-part series for Al Jazeera that unravels how the ruling party, BJP, has been abusing loopholes that exist in terms of transparency policy, ad policy, of the social media platform, Facebook. Sambhav, I'll first begin with the part two of the series, uh, which is titled Inside Facebook uh, and BJP's World of Ghost Advertisers. Uh, This particular story focuses on, firstly, the advertisements which were put out by BJP candidates on Facebook. Uh, The period which has been analyzed is that between February 2019 to November 2020, which is very crucial because we had our general election and in between there were 10 assembly elections, if I'm not wrong. So uh, when you compare the number of views that the advertisers, which were directly linked to BJP, got, which is around uh, 1.31 billion views, and when you compare it with the surrogate, uh, which did not reveal that, you know, we are linked with BJP, but they also propound and propagate the same kind of content. The views is at par. It's around more than 1.36 billion. What struck me was the number. So the direct uh, uh, advertisements which are coming from BJP sides uh, is somewhere around 26,000, 27,000, the aggregate figure. But when you compare it with the surrogates, their number is 34,844, to be precise. Help us understand, how does such a large volume of surrogate ads surpasses filters on Facebook? Sure. Uh, Thanks, Akansha. Actually, before coming to your question, I'll just probably give a little bit of context to what surrogate advertisers are and why they are problematic. As you rightly pointed out, there have been reports in India and outside about executives in Facebook who have been working to help the ruling party in India. But we really didn't know the scale and impact of this influence of Facebook on Indian elections. And what we started looking at in November 2020 was a data trove of Facebook's political advertisements in India. And there have been about more than 5 lakh ads, uh, almost 5.5 lakh ads placed on Facebook between February 2019 and November 2020. And we started looking at who these advertisers are, how much reach they had, how much money was spent, etc., etc. Almost about 2 million data points in this whole trove we were sort of investigating for almost a year. And we found that lots of advertisers uh, on Facebook do not reveal their identity, who they are, but they do place advertisements in support of BJP. Uh, A lot of times they do reveal identity, but they would not reveal if they are directly funded or connected or authorized by BJP. Now, there is a problem in this. In the Indian law, placing advertisement for a political candidate without being authorized by that candidate or without being funded by that candidate is a crime. It's a punishable crime. That's for two reasons. One, uh, if you're doing so, 
the political candidates are not accountable for the content which is being put in the advertisements they can always say that you know i didn't put these ads somebody else put i don't care and those ads could be problematic they could be lies the misinformation uh, or could be also uh, firing communal you know emotions among people so that's why it's important that these ads are only placed by the candidates or authorized by the candidate and second is the money uh in the indian election laws there is a cap on how much money a candidate can spend that's because we want the the election commission and the election laws want all candidates to be at par and money to not influence the election results but if somebody else puts ads then that money is not accounted in the candidate's expenditure so that's why it's not allowed if somebody is authorized then their expenditure would be added in the candidate's expenditure but what we saw on facebook that there were a large number of such advertisers who had placed almost who had placed actually more ads than bjp's official uh, candidates or their pages and they got almost equal number of views mm. for less money uh, which means that uh, the visibility of bjp on facebook was almost doubled by these surrogate advertisers uh, bypassing these uh, this election laws one and even facebook claims that they do not allow this and they actually did a clean up of such pages right before the 2019 elections but in that clean up most of the pages and surrogate advertisers were of congress the opposition uh there were only very few in minority so there of bjp's there was selective usage of their own uh policy related to uh the community guidelines uh, exactly. which uh, prohibits impersonation of any kind exactly so that's what we found in in this investigation and you as you rightly pointed out the visibility of these ads was was huge and uh, how we actually could fi- find these connections some of them i mean girish will reveal he actually looked at all these identities of these advertisers who these people are and we tried to backtrack those connections and uh, that's how we were able to find some connections as girish will explain and some we could not find any connection uh so yeah i mean this actually took us uh, a lot of effort to really get into this whole world uh, the hidden world of ghost and surrogate advertisers which mostly uh, support bjp and uh, with such a large chunk of uh, surrogate ads uh, you know which have uh, which are believed to have links with the ruling bjp party making it on the timelines of people it also shows that there is opacity as far as the sieving uh, mechanism is concerned so they are not really uh, doing it in a very laborious manner so uh, could you or girish also elaborate on what are the flaws in this policy as far as identifying such content is concerned um so uh since 2018 facebook claims that uh, it uh, every advertiser has to self declare uh, their details so for example their address uh, the website that uh, they uh, are associated with uh, their funding and so on now uh, as samba will uh, tell you we actually experienced this first hand when uh, one of our co-authors uh, miss nayantara when she registered herself as a researcher for facebook they actually showed up at her residence and they claimed that uh, we are here to check your background and we want to know who you are and uh, why you are doing this but uh, facebook claims that it does uh, the same check up the same level of check up for uh, its advertisers as well but that's clearly not happening right uh, so we analyzed for example over 5 lakh ads uh, from 145 or the uh, uh, advertisers and what we found is that very often the contact details and other details were completely missing uh, sometimes uh, we found that uh, the advertisers for example on two different pages will have the same phone number but they'll have a different address so someone sitting in west bengal who's promoting uh, bjp in west bengal and someone sitting in bihar who is uh, degrading rjd over there through their ads they have the same address uh, so, sorry they have the same phone number but different address we also found uh, instances uh, where the websites were dead or inactive and we could find their archived websites for example which implies that they were active at some point but now they aren't anymore 
So uh, I think a very good example of this would be four websites that uh, I stumbled on right in the beginning of this investigation. Uh, Nirmamta.com, there was uh, Bhakbudbhak.com, uh, there was another one uh, called Modi Sang Nitish. So mm. I mean the names are self-explanatory what kind of content they run. They're either pro-BJP or uh, anti-opposition. And uh, what we found is that if you look at their websites, they're no longer up anymore. But if you look at their archived websites, for example, uh, these websites are exactly the same. They have the same template. Even the content is the same. They have mm. the same disclaimers. Everything is the same. Right. right. So this is one person or one entity that's creating all these fake websites. It's like a shell company of sorts. Exactly. So that every entity can put ads on its. Yeah, payment. it's one entity that's running a web of advertisements on Facebook and uh invariably they all tend to favor the BJP in one way, directly or indirectly. And uh, the Facebook claims, for example, even in these ads, if you look at the ad library, which is where mm. we analyzed all this data from, you will see that Facebook will tell you that we have stopped these ads from running. They have deleted these ads because they violate their guidelines in some way. But there's a problem here. Mm. So one, you already got that money for those ads. Two, mm. you allowed those ads to run for 10 days in some instances. Before taking them down. Yeah, and uh, b by the time you had taken them down, millions of viewers, their target audience, had already seen it. Mm. So what's the point of you now claiming that we have taken these ads down because they violate our policy? Right. So we also found that a lot of these advertisers, uh, in earlier we talked about how there was a selective picking of who to, uh, whose ghosts and surrogates not to allow. But what we also found is that uh, Facebook uh, actually allowed these guys to uh, advertise for BJP uh, and uh, their policy did not, I mean, they, they, it completely failed when it came to this. And also uh, uh, something which I wanted to understand um, since this is, this happens to be a year long uh, investigative uh, project. Uh, the larger uh, sample size is that of 5 lakh ads and it was narrowed down to 145, um, I believe. So how did this sifting of data happen? And also, uh, our listeners, I, I just wanted to add that uh, Nayantara Ranganathan, whose name uh, Girish just mentioned, is uh, the third uh, journalist who has co-reported on the series. And unfortunately, uh, owing to certain reasons, she couldn't uh, join us today. So, yes, uh, Sambhav. Uh, sure. Uh, so, there were 5.5 lakh 36 thousand ads uh, on, in the ad library that were placed between these 22 months, the data that we analyzed for. Uh, why we did this 22 months is because Facebook started in February uh, 2019 showing these ads on the ad library. Right before the 2019 elections, they claimed that we are being transparent about the election campaigns on Facebook. And that's when they started displaying political ads in the library. So we have data available since then. That's when the data started right. generated. Right. We started work on this in November 2020. So we had those 22 months of data. Now, there were 5,36,000 ads. But as Girish mentioned, 145 were the advertisers who placed these ads. So there were a bunch of advertisers who placed large number of ads. Mm -hmm. So among uh, what we did actually, we identify all the advertisers and we sort of made a shorter data sample, uh, a smaller data sample of all the advertisers who had spent more than five lakh rupees. There were lots of advertisers who spent less than this, mm -hmm. but it just was not uh, in our capacity to go through so much of data of smaller advertisers. So we identify all the big advertisers who spent significant amount, which was more than five lakh rupees. And those were about 145 advertisers. Within those 145 advertisers, we identify all the official pages of BJP or their candidates, similarly for Congress and other parties. And all the official pages, candidates, we sort of, uh, clubbed them together as official advertisers, while the rest who placed political advertisements but did not declare any official association yeah. or identity, etc., we clubbed them as surrogate advertisers. Yeah. And then we found that for BJP, there were 23 uh, among these. For Congress, there were just two. Yeah. And their, their advertisements were much smaller, while BJP's, as I said, their advertisements were much higher of these 23, and they almost got double the visibility for, for BJP uh, content on, on the platform. 
and just, if, if yeah I, sure. i just wanted to add one thing uh, for context here uh, when we say uh, political ads uh, it's actually facebook that classifies these ads as political ads so some uh, private firms they wrote to us saying we don't uh, actually run political ads but to clarify it's facebook that calls them political ads we don't okay um and um like uh, the press release that came out uh with respect to the ads which were put out by the congress surrogates uh now if you look at those ads um they seem to be very innocuous ads uh, of course they reflect the sentiment of the party the you know uh, left of center incline uh, of the party and uh, they are attacking uh the prime minister but there doesn't seem to be something so offensive on what grounds were these ads uh, targeted and and does that sort of uh send out a message that facebook has applied rules selectively to listen to the response to this question you'll have to go to the audio version of this podcast which will be available on our website we want to bring you the stories that matter whether it be through interviews round reports videos or podcasts So if you believe in our vision do head over to our website newslaundry.com and click on the subscribe button